Hey everyone, Shane here with RVs of America or ROA Off-Road. I wanna talk a little bit about who we are and this new off-road camper that we carry. First off, ROA is an off-road camper company. Our nature is first off-road and adventure and second, we just so happen to sell campers. Some of the coolest campers in the world actually. We import campers from all over the world. We carry some really cool brands here in America and we originally started out with just run-of-the-mill american-made trailers and we realized they were cheap we didn't like them and so we wanted something better so we moved we kept on progressing and moving forward and trying to find better trailers and then we got into motorhomes diesel pushers really high-end very beautiful coaches but it was not true to our nature because on the weekends you know the guys at the shop the office we would go out and we'd camp and we'd go into the mountains, we'd go down to Moab and we'd off-road in our Jeeps or whatever way, you know, everybody has an off-road rig here. And we just decided, you know, we really wanna be known for off-road. And so we started looking around the world and we found out that out in Australia, some of the best off-road trailers are built there uh, in Africa and all over the world. And so we started pursuing these companies and started importing them into the US. And now we have a pretty cool lineup, extensive lineup of off-road campers from all over the world, from companies from South Africa, companies from Australia. We now carry some really neat brands that are made here in the United States. And we're also working on our own, um, building our own off-road trailer. But this is one of the newest campers to our lineup. And I'm really excited to share it with you. This is the OBI, which stands for Outback Innovations, and it's the Dweller 13. But a little bit about who OBI is, a little bit of background. Two owners have this own this company. They dreamed it up and created, designed it here in the United States of America. So they're an American-owned company. One of them is, has a lot of extensive background in manufacturing, actually in the Australian industry. And while he was overseas, he realized that there is a huge opportunity in the United States to bring you know, Australian designed products into the US. And so he partnered up with a guy that's from Arizona and they teamed up together to build the OBI. And they pulled all their inspiration from Australia and that's why they call it the Outback Innovations because they took everything they had learned from the Outback and the Australian campers and they put that into this, the Dweller, the D13, and they've created, you know, a camper for Americans. So this camper is not anywhere in the world. This is the first of its kind. It's only in the United States, but comes from that Australian background, you know, that innovation of how the Australians design it. So here it is. This is the Dweller D13 by OBI. This is gonna be a full tour. I'm gonna to go in a lot of depth and I'm gonna go through all the specs, all the measurements inside and out. And so it's a long video, so get prepared, get ready. We're gonna get, get into this. So here we go. Let's start first with some of the specs, some of the numbers. So starting with some of the measurements, the dry weight of this unit is 4,800 pounds. So pretty light. It should be able to be towed by any half ton or bigger, of course, potentially some midsize vehicles, depending on the terrain. Total length from end to end, this is popped out right now in inside there you have the king size bed which we'll show you inside in a little bit but when this is closed and the tires are up all the way from the tire to the very tip of the front of the trailer the tongue is about 19 foot 6 inches uh, the width of the trailer itself is about 7 foot 3 inches which is nice that's pretty common to be about the same width as a tow vehicle like a half ton truck so you're you're tracking a very similar line when you are going off road with this type of trailer the height of the trailer from the ground to the top of the roof this is closed is eight foot three inches so if your garage is nine feet or taller you can park it inside it pops up and gives you about a 16 inch raise the interior height is from the floor to the ceiling is about six foot seven inches of course there's some little lights and stuff at the lowest point is around six foot six inches so very tall people can fit into this very comfortably especially with that king size bed okay so the departure angle on the trailer it's a 22 degree departure angle which is phenomenal for a trailer your ground clearance depending on where you measure from the control arm to the step or the tongue the the lowest point is around 11 to 12 inches and most of the body or the tanks or the tongue is 16 
to 18 inches, so lots of clearance. We've actually taken this to one of our test grounds in the West Desert from us, and we've taken it on obstacles, and it did phenomenal. We, we put it through some obstacles that quite frankly, stock trucks would struggle to get through. So the, tra the trailer is beyond capable for off-roading. Now, a lot of people always complain about how tours typically start on the outside and go all the way around, and then finally they go into the inside. So we're gonna change this up a little bit for you, and we're gonna go inside, show you the inside, and then we'll come back outside and do a walk around. So let's head on inside and show you in here. Okay, this trailer is very nice for a couple or a couple with a small child that they don't mind sleeping in the bed with them. Or you could put a kid down on the floor too, but it has one large king size bed. Like I said, ideal for a couple. Really easy to manage and maneuver around and lots and lots of storage space. This has a full outside kitchen, so you don't actually have a kitchen inside. Now, in our other video with the 15, where we did some options for inside kitchen, and there's tons and tons of storage and counter space that you could do that. But to start with, we have this nice little table. This has an adjustable. Uh, it's very common, a lagoon table. We install this in a lot of trailers that we've used over the years, and it's really cool. It goes up and down, moves in all different angles. You can move it all the way out of the way and just stow it over here or you can bring it bring it over here and you can just eat two people sitting like check this out so i could sit here two people could sit right here adjust that out of the way so somebody could sit right here somebody right here and you could have a nice meal um, if it's a rainy day you could bring it around and move it like this and you could put two people over there two here you could scoot squeeze i mean you could really comfortably probably put four people around this table if you're playing cards like i said on a rainy day it's actually freezing outside right now so we have the heater running the heater in here i'll talk a little bit more about the appliances and the components towards the end of the tour but uh really really open area i really enjoy this the the leather this is a faux leather it has the diamond stitching it feels very quality and it's also very thick and very comfortable to sit on. I've sat on that for hours working on my computer while we've been out here. We've, we've now had this guy, this D13 out uh, almost for going on two weeks. We're going on our second week of being out. We've been camping, we've been off grid, we've been kind of utilizing them, using the showers, the toilets, just getting familiar with the product because it's really important here at ROA Off-Road we love the off-road, but we also want to be the authorities and know more about this product than anybody else out there. And so it's very important that we're using it so that we can share with you how everything works and functions. The water system, we got about a total of 52 gallons of fresh water, onboard fresh water. Now the, the toilet is a cassette toilet, which I'll go into some more detail on that. That has its separate tank um, and that's a couple gallons. And so that actually, so that adds to your water and you can fill those independently. They have their separate tanks. Under this bed area, I love this bed. These beds are unbelievably comfortable. This entire mattress is eight inches thick. And I, I'm pretty picky when it comes to my mattresses it, and a good night's sleep is important to me. And almost, most trailers in the RV industry, it's pretty, common that they put the cheapest mattress you can not the case with these mattresses i've been sleeping on these mattresses and i i don't even think you need a foam topper usually i think you do but moving back into this area as you can see we have some nice reading lights here and then we have some usb ports for phones or chargers you also have some 12 volt cigarette lighters right here and then right here you have your little heater ports and I'll talk more about the heater later. There's three ports for the heaters, one here, one there, one down on the floor in the kitchen area. That's all working off of a Truma, a, a combi, eco combi. This storage space right here is massive. If you come over here, you can kind of see like almost elbow deep. That's my fist to there. So very deep, you can Drop a book in there and it disappears. And then same with over here, same stuff going on. We have uh, another heater 
another light, and then you have your, your plugs, your ports, windows here, window over there, huge window in the back. And these blinds, when you close them up, they're very dark. So these are the nighttime blinds. If you want, you have your screens here for or midge nets or mosquito nets, and then more storage here on the side. Also by the table right here, you have your another one of these cigarette lighters, 12 volt plugs, or your USB outlets. Lots and lots of areas to plug things in. Okay, moving over to this little nice storage spot, countertop. You also have your TV right here. This is from your bed viewing. You can be laying on your bed watching a movie. This is a 12 volt, so we'll work off grid. These are straps that hold it while you're in transit. And you may be thinking, all trailers have straps. Nope, not true. We've had trailers that don't have any straps. And so the TVs are just flying around, hitting stuff while you're in transit. Um, this is a really nice mount though. It kind of swivels in different directions. You can bring it all the way out and you can come this way. I want to sit and eat and watch a movie. You could potentially, you know, change this out to put it on a monitor, make this into a workstation. Lots of different use cases that you could do with this. Uh, behind the TV, there's more plugs and outlets. You got more USB ports, you got more 12 volt, you got your actual shore power, and you could run the inverter. And that inverter I'll talk more about later. It's a uh, Renogy. Now above the TV, you have AC ports. So this blows right on you during the night and you have another AC port down closer to the bathroom. So let's move over into the storage area and show you what we have here. Okay, moving over here, we have, of course, more shelf space up here, where when you get to wherever you're going, you can set some stuff up, decorations or extra just supplies. Now these, I do wanna talk a little bit about these latches. These are really nice. Uh, you don't see this type of stuff in anything in America. You know, you see this a lot in the off-road, you know, Australian industry. And it's just super important. When you're talking off-road trailers, the, that's the biggest thing that's going to happen is, I, you know, I always tell the story of the pickle juice. This is where I went out with a bunch of friends. We did this a relay race. We had a, a big motor home, $100,000 motor home. You know what type of latches they use? 98 cent latches. You know, you can go to Home Depot and buy them for 98 cents. And they're just a little push clip, you know? And so I was making this turn and the cabinet flew open and this jar of pickle juice came out or pickles and pickle juice came out and shattered and the whole entire RV smelled like pickle juice. We had to stop. It was just not pleasant. This is not going to happen with this. This is locked. So you have to engage the switch mechanism here to unlock it right there. And you can see these nice hinges open up. You're gonna have problems with hinges and stuff over time. Usually it's because doors are flying open and bouncing around, right? And that's why you have issues. Talk a little bit, you have hanging space here and some extra little cubby up here. One of the things I wanna mention is this cabinetry, this wood. It is actual wood. It's not like a honeycomb with a veneer or anything on it. This is a UV coated plywood and you can screw into it. The honeycomb tends, doesn't have a center. So it's not as that hollow center doesn't allow for things actually being screwed into it. So it, this is much stronger. The UV coating is much stronger. So you're not going to have, we've had a lot of issues with veneers and honeycombs and it's, it's just a nightmare. You don't want to have problems like that in a trailer that you buy. Nice little drawers and shelves. You could put clothing and, and extra stuff. Another one right there and another one right here. This right here, you could actually put stuff in. It's pretty deep. You could put stuff in the back and then you could also lift this little guy up here and maybe put a tall trash can or a, uh, you know, maybe a little laundry hamper or something, but cool little different applications. Let's move over past the bathroom into the front area of the trailer, which I call it the kitchen area, food area. Now, this is the front area. There's lots of storage up here. Food is usually what we're putting up here, as you can see, our nice little food display. The kitchen is also just right outside the door. Um, the refrigerator, the kitchen space, there's also a tray out there, a bar tray where you can have 
food prep and then the, the stove and the sink. So everything is like right out the door here. So it, it's kind of convenient. Now you do have a plug up here. Uh, and the nice thing is that's the shore power, but it will work off the inverter. So you can have a hot pot or a tea kettle, or uh, you know you can have a stove, uh, one of those propane stoves would be ideal. But you can make this into a little cook station. You know, if you don't wanna go out in the cold morning, wherever you're at, you can make this into your kitchen area. There is a lot of storage. You can't see back here. There's a little cubby here where you can throw some cups and miscellaneous goods. Down here, opening this, this is very nice, deep, lots of storage. These drawers, we got silverware in here. We have nice extra space. You could put some pots and pans and bowls, other miscellaneous stuff in this drawer. Back here, this is the last big storage area in this trailer, the front trailer, is this area. And this is massive. You can't quite see how deep this goes in, but it's my, the entire length, I can't even reach it. It's very, very massive. Uh, you also have space that goes into here that's pretty deep. Um, and then a nice little light to utilize that. Lots and lots of space for a trailer this size, more space than you need. Um, there's also a lot of outside space, which we'll show you when we get back outside. I'll show you around the back side. There's a nice tool chest area and lots of space for your food and everything. So let's head into the bathroom and show you the bathroom. Okay, coming into the bathroom. Bathroom is always in an important place. We spend a lot of, a lot of our life in the bathroom between doing your duties and taking showers. Ladies, you put on your makeup, whatever, brush your teeth. Spend a lot of time in the bathroom, so you want a nice bathroom. I always say, like, the main reason why you buy a trailer or a camper is because you want a bathroom and a nice bed. And the dwellers do a very good job. They give you a plush, eight inch, thick mattress, king size bed in a very nice bathroom. It is a wet bath, but it's very comfortable. Lots of space in here. Uh, lots of space for storage. This is all a molded piece of fiberglass. The slope of the actual shower pan is very good. <laughs> We've showered in it and it flows. Even if you're not perfectly level, it still flows. We've had trailers where you are perfectly level and they don't flow. So just little details, once you actually own a trailer, it will drive you crazy. You're not gonna have that issue in this trailer. Um, you have this huge space in here where you can throw in toilet paper or um, toilet solution that locks in nicely. It feels kind of like you're in a yacht in here. We always do the soap drop test where if you dropped a bar of soap, could you bend down and pick it up? You know, and there you go. That's six feet, 250 pounds, plenty of space in here. Coming over to here, you do have a nice little storage area where you can throw some toilet paper, have your toiletries. This one actually has a gap back here where you could throw some, I don't know, your clothes, your towels, just miscellaneous stuff. This opens up where you can see outside. It's a nice sunny day. I really like this little storage space back there. Above us here, we have fan and light system. There's your lights, your LEDs. Everything is LED, obviously, nowadays. Welcome to 2022. Not everything, you get into some cheap trailers and they don't use them. You have the fan. This is this is nice is because it, it's reversible so it can either bring air in or out. The fan is like, you know, that big. Uh, I've seen some of these stock fans that they put on RVs and they're like really, really small and they do nothing. This one is decent. It does a pretty good job. We, we do upgrades at ROA off-road and that's one of the cool, unique things about us is, you know, when it comes to owning a camper and an off grid off-road trailer, sometimes you wanna customize it yourself, right? And so what's really cool is here at ROA, we can upgrade things, we can make improve things. And so if you wanted to get a better fan, we could put that in. Otherwise, you stick with this. This one is very nice. It's not it's not the cheapest one you can buy on the market, which you, you usually see that. This is, it actually feels like a really um, premium fan. 
the Fantastic Ven fans definitely bring in more air and out. Coming over to the shower, this is a beautiful shower. Starts down here, you can clip it there and this can adjust. So if you're extremely short or if you're still pretty short, those are your options. We have trailers where the pop tops, that is your option. This is really nice that Dweller has been thoughtful enough to put a little clip up there. So if you're taller, you can actually shower with this. You know, if you're si over six feet tall, you can be underneath the shower, showering. A little soap dish here. We've added some of these little extras. Like I said, here at ROA, we do things like that for people. So these little, ex this it doesn't come with this, but you could add that easily. Now, I wanna talk a little bit about this toilet. And this is a cassette toilet. So very comfortable to sit down on. There's lots of arm space here. I love this toilet. When we first started importing campers from overseas, you know, if you go into Europe, Australia, Africa, cassette toilets are probably the most popular toilets you can buy, especially when you're talking off-road and off-grid, because it's the simplest, they're, they're pretty problem-free. You know, not a lot of things to go wrong with a cassette toilet. You pull it out, I'll show you how it works. You pull it out, you take it to the station, you just dump it in. The cool thing about it is if you're in the woods, you don't have to drag your trailer somewhere to go and get it emptied. You can just pull it out. You can even take it on the, you know, it has a cool little handle like a carry on. You can take it on trips with you if you wanted to. You can, it's just very versatile, right? Take your cassette toilet, dump it in a pit toilet and the, and the forest, national forest toilets, and you don't have to move your trailer. You stay off grid for much longer. And that's what I like about the cassette toilets. But there's this, there is the bathroom tour. And let's move on to the appliances and electronics, because that's pretty important when we're talking off grid and off road. So let's head over to the bed area. Okay, now we are, this is underneath the bed. We have this nice aluminum frame and the board that covers this area is a half inch plywood, which is what all of the cabinetry is. It's that UV coated plywood. So it's not thin. I, I've had lots of issues with the, the material. They put like not even half inch, like less than quarter inch thin paneling underneath your beds and you put your knee into it and you po po yeah, poke a hole through it. So this, this is thick, it's strong wood. Um, this is what covers up all of your appliance area. What do we have under here? We got a few things going. We got our electrical system. Now stock, the trailer comes with three 100 amp hour AGM batteries. That is not necessarily the best in the world. Now, of course, in the United States, most trailers come with zero batteries. You actually have to buy your own batteries <laughs> from a lot of manufacturers. So I guess three is better than none. And then most people, they'll buy a single deep cell lead acid battery, or they might get two six volts golf cart batteries. So the fact that they give you AGM 100 amp hour, three of them, it is nice. It is a, it is a good power system. And for going off grid on a trailer this size, you can stay off grid for a long time. Here at ROA Off-Road, people travel from all over the country to buy campers from us. And one of the main reasons is because we can modify and upgrade things. And we could definitely switch out the batteries to lithium if that's what you wanted to do. But talking about the stock systems, we have Renogy. Renogy is what they've run into this camper all throughout. You, you have your solar charge controller system. It's a 30 amp PWM and that's Renogy. The solar panels, you have three flat solar panels. They're 100 watt solar panels. They're all Renogy. The wiring to the solar panels are Renogy and your inverter charging system is Renogy. So I really, really like that they've just stuck with one system. I've seen where lots of campers and manufacturers, they just, it's like a Frankenstein. They put so many different components together and things don't always communicate as well when you're using different systems. So it's nice that they've used Renogy. They're a reputable worldwide company. Moving over to here, we have the Truma. The Truma is a phenomenal company. They've been around for since 1949. It's a German manufacturer and they make these this is the truma combi eco 
And what that means is it, this duels as both your furnace and your water heater. It is a propane system, but it does forced hot air and it's ducted in three different places. And then it also does your water heater. So you'll have your hot water onboard water heater in this system. Um, the furnace runs, uh, it's a variable speed, so you can actually change the speeds and the output of the heat, and it can range anywhere from 7,500 BTUs up to 14,300 BTUs on the max speed. And that max speed, you're gonna be using 6.1 amps. On average, it will use around one and a half amps per hour, which is really, really, really good, actually. Huge fan of the Trumas. They're a great, great company. Coming over to here, this is your water pump. This is a Seaflow. Um, it's a three gallon per minute, three and a half amps. And over here, you actually have a tank. It's a bladder. It's a, the uh, accumulator. This is not required by code or um, the RV industry, and you typically do not get this in most trailers. This manufacturer has really gone out of their way to add some of these things. And what this does is it just actually will increase the longevity of the life of your water system, of the pump. Now there's always pressure, you know, with hot water, there's always this up and down in pressure. So this pump can like turn on and pulsate every, you know, 30 seconds to a minute. With the accumulator, that reduces it because it's like a balloon, like a bladder, it fills up and then it sends the pressure out throughout the system. So your pump is not working as hard. You'll also get a more steady flow of water coming through your faucets. It's a nice add-on, it's a nice feature. It's not standard. You do not see this in most trailers. Now moving over to the AC, the HVAC AC system. Now this is cool. These trailers do not have air conditioner units sitting on top of the roof, which I just feel like AC units on the roof is just a thing. It should be a thing of the past. Unfortunately, it's not yet. But the AC unit is under here, you can't see it but it's in box, it's enclosed and boxed, it's slated, very, very quiet because it's not on the roof and it's not blowing on your head. You don't hear that noisy fan kicking on. It's underneath your bed, your mattress, so it's it's very well insulated. I, when I'm on it, it's like a very light hum. It's You don't barely even hear it. The And it's all ducted, so it has three ducts that go throughout the trailer. Um, it's a 9,000 BTU AC unit. The, the high peak watt running watts is 950 watts, which is unbelievable. It's unheard of. It's an Australian made AC unit. They call it the Underbunk HB9000. It's an Australian manufacturer and uh, it's one of my favorite AC units to date. It, it functions very well. It has different variable speeds, so you don't have to always be running it at one speed. It also comes with a heat pump. So if you're running heat, you can turn on the heat and run that. If you're plugged in, you can turn on the heat and run that as well. So that pretty much hits everything in this area. We have uh, everything down here. I just want to point out, it's just really well put together. The wiring is going where it's supposed to. Everything's got fuses like it's supposed to. They've taped things together, zip tied things together. It, it doesn't look like just a slam job. They've built these little stands where the things sit on and you can see they put rubber grommets and washers on everything. These valves right here change to the different um, water tanks because you have two onboard water tanks. Uh, really, everything just looks very neat and nice. I'm very, very impressed with all the systems on this trailer. I want to kind of show you some of the, the front end of the components so you can see what they look like. And then we'll head over to the entry door area and then outside. Okay, here we have your air conditioning unit, like we mentioned, and it has the different variables, the fan, fan speed or the heat pump. That's the heat, that's the air conditioning, adjust the temperatures or turn it off. Right here you have the Adventure solar charge controller by Renogy. Like I said, it's a 30 amp PWM. We could upgrade that into an MPPT. Moving over here, we have the Truma. And this is a really cool system. You can see the, how it lights up and you can adjust the, this is the temperature of the actual furnace. You can hit that. You can move over to the, you can move over to the water heater, right? And hit that and you can hop, boost or eco. You can change the fan settings to different speeds. Really cool system. Down below here we have the, the Renogy and this engages the inverter system. 
and that just means you can take your 12 volt power and your battery power and turn it into shore power or 120 volt so you can run electronics you know like a laptop you could plug in your laptop or run a coffee pot or any other appliances that you would plug into a wall and then over here we have our breaker panel which you just press that and lifts up and then you have your panel your breakers and then here you have your propane gas detector these are the atwoods and they don't chirp or beep and they are really working nice and then you have some ventilation in here to create some airflow into your under cabinet for your components. Okay, as we come on outside, let's talk about the outside and go all the way around. First, I do wanna mention this door. This is a sweet door. This is called the Aussie Traveler. It's an Australian door. It has a bunch of different features that are neat. One of them is this screen door. This screen door separates and it is very robust, all aluminum and pretty thick, so you're not gonna have anything running through this or accidentally breaking it. This also has a locking mechanism, it's called the Tri-Lock. Why it's Tri is because it has three latching points. Uh, you have a latching point up here and a latching point down here. As you push this forward, you'll see how these open up and they engage. So it's not just a single spot of where it engages right here. Obviously it does right here, but if you pull this out, you can kind of see there's some looseness to the door. When you engage it, now you can't pull it out. So it locks in. And when you lock that, it's just very, very good if you're off-roading and the trailer's twisting and bending. I've seen this on trailers where the doors can pop open. That's not going to happen in this case. We have this nice little grab bar and this does light up at night, as you can see. And then this shuts like that. Also, you have a ventilation thing down here that covers. Um, in Australia, the Oz Traveler doors are required to put these vents in. And the nice thing is I've seen these on other trailers that are imported across seas and they just have this open vent. So you get dirt and dust and everything flying into your trailer. They've actually made this nice where you can clip it shut and have that protection. It's not just for dust, it's also for heat and cold. Here in the US we deal with extreme temperatures, cold or hot, unlike Australia, and um, that becomes a just an open window essentially. You get cold air and, and hot air just going through in or out of there. Another thing I want to mention is this step. As you remember it is electric. For whatever reason the step is not working and this is wonderful because I want to show you a feature on this step that I've never seen on any other step. So thank you, Dweller. Um, I'm pressing close, it's electric and it's getting, it's getting bound up for some weird reason. It might need to be lubed or adjusted. In most cases, you would be in trouble because your step is stuck in the out position. This company has decided to prevent that. They have a quick release right here that you can pull and you can actually manually put that step in which is awesome <laughs> for exactly this case where something might go wrong, you can use this adjustment and make it into a manual step and not even use the electric mechanism. Very good and very useful, especially one for whatever reason it's not working because uh, listen, this is RVing and not just RVing, campers, but anything in the world, anything that's made by man can be broken or have a malfunction it doesn't matter whether you have a brand new car and you know it's silly people think oh if i spend twenty thousand dollars on a car or versus fifty thousand or a hundred thousand dollars like the quality or the the less uh occurrence of things going wrong is gonna go down by the price point that's not true like you know somebody who owns a bentley is gonna have that in the shop for services just as much as somebody, actually maybe less than somebody with a Toyota, as a matter of fact. Regardless, it's that, that's how everything in this world works. Trailers have are not exempt from having issues, nor are rockets made by NASA. You know, we know from the history, even things go wrong in spaceships that, you know, NASA, the smartest engineers and scientists have created. So the key is to have some sort of fail safe, right? If you have an issue, if something's not working, is there a backup way to close it? Um, other campers that we've had that have electric steps like this don't actually have that. 
and that's kind of an issue because if it's not working what do you do usually in the past what we've said is grab a wrench and take the whole set of stairs off so you don't knock them off down the road so very very cool let's move over into this little entertainment area uh, this is could be uh, either you could call it the outside bar or a kitchen prep area because as you can see the kitchen the sink and the stove are over there so it's all very close so you can use this as prep there is a little mount here you can take the tv off on the inside and bring that out and set it up here and it's all wired pre-wired so you can run the television outside so if you are a tailgater uh this is actually the ultimate tailgater because you got your grill you got your sink you got tv over here you got fridge so you put your drinks in this closes up and you also have some nice storage space so that closes in locks right there there's a nice handle too that you can grab on uh, moving over to the kitchen sink area over here we have a sink where i have been throwing the plumbing i love this because it's very easy to hook up and it has these little caps. You might be like, well, obviously. Well, we've had trailers that don't have the caps. These are details that you don't always see. I mean, it makes sense that there would be caps to protect it from dirt, especially the ones over here that are on the outside, you know, that are gonna get dirty. But yeah, you just plug it in. There you go, super easy. Now you got water and then the same with the hot. So you do have hot or cold water out here, which is nice for washing your hands and your and your dishes and anything really um coming over here we have a bottle opener down there let's open this up and as you can see we have some cutlery silverware miscellaneous stuff salt and pepper you can use that for your cooking your meals we have a dometic two burner stove these this actually cooks very very well i was cooking my eggs the other night on this and actually cooked too fast Coming over to here, this is some extra prep space and it just slides right over the kitchen. And then once you slide that in, it slides in. Oh, and I do wanna sh showcase there are some nice outside lights, LED lights. These light bars are extremely bright. No problem seeing that dark at nighttime. Same with this light up here. We have our speakers and let's move over to the fridge. Okay, so here we are at our fridge. This is an Iceco. This is a great fridge uh, manufacturer. You'll see these in a lot of people's overland. You know, fridges, there's a lot of different options. This is what comes stock. It's, it is a 90 liter dual zone, which is very large. That will, I mean, I've been on trips with my family of three, and that provides a good week's worth of food. I mean, it depends on how you pack and what you eat, right? But yeah, this is really just opens up like this. Um, it even gives you uh, temperature settings to put at for what you want to put in here, whether uh, you want to make it a freezer or a fridge. Uh, lots of space in here. You do have a light in here with the sensor that turns on and off when you close the door. And then working around here, you have another bottle opener. These trays that the fridge sits on are very nice. The, they're all painted. They're all laser cut and they look really, really good. Coming around here, actually, I think I want to drink. Oh, but I don't have to, I don't want to have to walk all the way around the fridge again. Oh, look at this. I don't have to. You know, it may be silly to you that this opens up two different ways, but to me, I don't think it's that silly. It's actually quite convenient. You know, when I'm uh, looping around and need to get out and grab a drink from a hard day of driving, I don't need to walk all the way around it. I can just open it right here. It's silly, but actually I use this quite frequently. I'm, I've been really enjoying that dual fridge opening capability. But now we close and put the fridge away. Cool option that they put in here is that they do have two different power option or connectors. You have the good old fashioned cigarette lighter 12 volt plug, or you have an Anderson plug and those connect way, way better. Looking down on the other side of this door, you can see there is a filter. I've seen other manufacturers put in a filter, but they don't actually have a filter in it. <laughs> like, or like they have a spot for a filter, but this is actually, this encasing I should say, there's actually a filter in there, so we'll keep the dust out. Uh, all the gaskets are really nice. We've driven this off-road and we don't, we're not getting dirt inside. These latches, our luggage 
latches is what we call them and that's because we see these on motor coaches or diesel pushers you see these really expensive half a million 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 and a half dollar motor coaches they use these exact same latches these are twenty dollar latches people ask you know when you're talking about pricing on trailers the common standard you see on most travel trailers this size they use these one two three dollar latches when you're using latches that are you know five times as expensive that adds up right but these are also very strong very good quality i've never seen issues same with just the little simple things like the hinges right you don't notice this uh lots of you go look at a ch cheap travel trailer made in the u.s they actually don't even have an actual hinge they're these little aluminum um, pieces of metal and they just bend over and they slide it in and then they put rivets but sometimes those rivets pop off and then the door can just slide out right out I've seen where I open up and the rivets were gone and the door just falls off right that's not gonna happen when you have actual hinges and heavy-duty latches so coming around to the front area I want to show you up here okay here we are at the front of the trailer, the tongue. Up here we have our propane tanks, which are outside sitting here. You have space for two. We have these 20 pounders. The nice thing is since it's open, you can go larger, you can go to the 30 pounders. You have some nice handles here. The trailer is pretty light overall, so you can push and move around a little bit with this. Um, moving up here, we have this nice front storage box. Everything does have capability to put in locks so you can lock this space up here nice gas struts that assist in the lift and keep it up uh, we've had some that the gas struts are too strong and it's hard to close up here you do have a vent so it is with a filter and just nice little storage area up here this is enough space to put a generator like a little 2000 watt honda generator the cool thing is the AC unit, if you recall, 950 watts at max output, you can run a pretty small generator depending on your elevation of where you're at. It also has nice seals and gaskets. So closing this up, let's move towards the, the tongue area. Right here we have a little spigot for water if you wanna fill up a bucket or something. Right here we have the arc jockey wheel and then that's and that's the 500 series this this jockey wheel is pretty sweet especially for a smaller trailer this little guy right here is a little magnetic that comes out so when you're traveling it actually moves up and down so if you pull this lever this whole thing slides up and down and then of course if you do this that tube part goes down it is on a wheel the idea with this is if you ever got into a recovery situation if you put this down really low you could actually pull the trailer with the jockey wheel, which we have actually done on a trailer this small, that's doable. The actual frame itself, two by six, rectangular hollow studs. It is hot dipped galvanized. If you don't know what that is, pretty much when you forge a piece of steel, it immediately, once it's done being forged, it starts to corrode and then it turns to rust, right? Uh, steel, typically if you forge a tube of steel and throw it in your yard, you got about 50 to 100 years and it's turned back to dirt. It's corroded and rusted and then it becomes dirt. Galvanization, hot dip galvanization is a process where they dip it into a molten bath of zinc and it adheres to the steel. And you'll see uh, anything outside, you know, especially by the ocean, you'll see, you know, handrails, freeway signs are galvanized. Uh, and galvanization is going to protect steel for anywhere from 50 to 100 years in the harshest conditions. So that means on the ocean with salt water and everything. Um, it, you know, when regular steel, if it's not galvanized, is gonna be dirt by that time. And, you know, galvanization will just start to deteriorate around the same time. So it is really, really nice when you have a trailer, especially if you're along the coast where you have a lot of rust. I mean, my parents had a trailer and it's just painted, right? It's an American built trailer growing up. And we went and stayed in the Bay Area for like a summer and the whole trailer started rusting. Like the whole the frame started get, started corroding and you started seeing rust everywhere. And my dad just had the hardest time. It just, it just it's like a cancer, it starts spreading, right? It's hard to fix. So um, galvanized frame, 
Moving up to this area, we have the articulating hitch, which I always say, if you don't have an articulating hitch, you can't call the trailer off-road. If you're running the ball, it's not an off-road trailer. So up here, they go with the Mick hitch, which I love. I know there's a lot of different articulating hitches. The D35, D45s are pretty popular. I think these are way better. I know there are people that rave about those Ds, D35s, but usually it's because they've never experienced a make hitch. I've experienced pretty much all the articulating hitches that Australia offers. And this is my favorite, mostly because the way it connects and locks in, it's you back it up and it's like a docking, like a space shuttle docking system where it just locks in or like a fifth wheel hitch if you're familiar with that. Uh, this is the 7,700 pound McHitch, so rated for this with no problem. You have these monstrous recovery chains in case the trailer ever did get detached. And then these nice little hooks where you can store them when you're in storage mode. You also have a e-brake so uh you don't gotta go get rocks chocks or blocks <laughs> for your wheels still if you're on a really incline it's not a bad idea and lastly up here we have the anderson plug if you do want to be able to tow while in transit or just you know charge up your batteries you can always get that installed to your truck you can also use this as a solar hook up, you can actually hook in uh, an exterior solar panel. There is solar panel on the roof, if you recall, uh, three 100 watts, but you can have an extra one, like a briefcase style sitting outside. So let's move on over to the driver's side or the road side of the trailer. Okay, coming over to this side, I wanna talk a little bit about the shower area. It just slides right into here and comes out with some poles and all the units come with it. So you do have the inside shower, but you also have an outside shower for nice warm days or on the beach, right? So you don't have to be filling up your gray tank. You can just run the water out. Uh, let's set that up really quick and show you. Look at the shower. It's all set up and ready to go. This is a very spacious shower. Come in a little bit closer so I can show it off to you. This shower is huge. And now everybody always wants to know, can you drop the bar of soap and bend over and pick it up? And I assure you, not only can I do it, but I think I could do it with maybe uh, three or four different people in here. There is so much space in this shower. So if you want to shower with lots of people, or just yourself, you got lots of room to move around. Also have these nice little handy dandy pockets where you can put stuff in it. This little guy holds your water if you wanna pull it down and spray. This also comes out pretty far, as you can see, lots of range. If you wanna shoot somebody on the outside, you can. Uh, you wanna clean the floor off, you can. Also, some of these showers that I've seen, there's no way for the water to go out. And if you pull this up, it's actually mesh under there. So the water can flow right on out. This hose, you don't wrap it inside of here. It actually goes into its own little house, slides all the way in and stores nicely. Up here, if you wanna shower at night, you can because there's a light out here and they've made this nice little clear spot for you to be able to see while you're showering at night. It's just funny. you. You get into a lot of trailers. I mean, I see a lot of campers and trailers over the years and they don't, there's a lot of details that they kind of mess up on where you're kind of like, oh, why did you not think that one through? Like not putting the zipper where the shower is or this. So, you know, it's been designed around the trailer just like you would expect it to be. Um, no crazy modifications. You know, a lot of our trailers, we do retrofit and we do mods. Some of it is to enhance the trailer and make it better. And some of our mods are because what the trailer does stock, quite frankly, just sucks. And so it needs to be modified. You also have a nice little window here. Obviously, if you're private, somewhere nice, all by yourself, you can shower with the window open. Let's head over to this nice storage area right over here by the toilet. Okay, once again, lockable, all of them as you can see. And this little storage area opens up. These storage boxes, it's hard to get capture on film, 
but they're really nice. They just feel very stout and robust. Here we got my Smitty Built, my air compressor, my recovery gear by ARB. And I would have a lot more stuff in here if I was camping long term or on a long trip, but we just came down to film mostly and have a little bit of fun. The light, you know, with the sensor, so when you open it up, it automatically turns on. Very, very, very nice storage area, and it all locks in. You gotta just make sure you use the latch. Up here, we have more storage space with another light, and this is actually huge. Uh, if you can kind of capture the depth, I can't even reach it. Large enough for uh, my guests that I don't like, they can sleep in here. You can put the canvas for the shower in here, and it doesn't take up that whole space. That thing packs, compacts pretty good. But yeah, so let's move down to the toilet because everybody wants to know all about the toilet. That's very important in RV life. This is the cassette toilet, which one thing I wanna make sure you are aware of, there's a little cap on this and it comes with the toilet. You definitely wanna put that on. Uh, our camera guy uh, did lots of duties and gross stuff and didn't put the cap on. So it started splashing as he was off-roading and, and yeah, it was, it was delightful, let's just say. I really like this system. On this side, let's talk a little bit about the construction, because we haven't mentioned that yet. Uh, this is a diamond plating. It is aluminum. This is an, an aluminum composite. Inside and outside is all aluminum. One of the things I do want to mention is the paint. It is a gloss paint and it's very pretty. I don't know if you can get that in the camera, but when you, when, when you actually clean this thing up, it kind of glistens. One of the things that they're very proud of the manufacturer is that they use automotive processes and automotive grade paint when it comes to their trailers. So they're very proud at the manufacturer. They have full you know, rooms that these things go into and get painted. So it's not, not cheap. I see a lot of different manufacturers do really, really cheap paint and they just start fading really fast. So that's really nice. Uh, once again, the interior structure, it is a rectangular hollow stud. It's an aluminum stud and it's all welded aluminum. That's what you want in a trailer. You don't want stick frame built wood. You know, the paneling is not wood. You don't have, you're not gonna have that, you know, those problems with delamination over time because it's all aluminum. Windows, let's talk a little bit about these windows. These are a Eurovision polycarbonate. They are dual pane windows. So great for a little bit extra insulation. And then in the actual windows themselves, some people say polycarbonate, why don't you use glass? Well, glass is heavier. So this does actually reduce the weight quite a bit but it also is a lot stronger. And I mean, we've thrown baseballs at it. We've hit trees just to show how strong it is. Um, over here, you have the water fill. You also have the other water fill. It's behind the shower. When the shower set up, you gotta, uh, you can't see it. Over here, this is the Truma exhaust and we have the power. If you are at home or at an RV park, you wanna be able to run the AC and also the, AC unit duels as a heat pump. I don't know if I mentioned that earlier, but it does duel as a heat pump so you can run heat or air conditioning while you're plugged in or, you know, the heat off grid, obviously. And it is a 50 amp plug. So let's move over to this, the back side, and show off this. This is the slide out, the pop out, and you have the king size bed in there. But I'm gonna kind of show you how easy this is to put away. And then we'll lift up the tires We'll talk a little bit about the tires, rims, and brakes. Hello. Um, this actually has three different settings, as you can see. Uh, this is a beautiful view, if you could see out here. Just sitting on the top of plateaus, enjoying the sun and the breeze in here. I'm gonna show you how to put this thing away. It's very easy. Uh, let's start with moving the mattress. Come on over here and you can see a little bit better. Get off the bed. Um, you gotta move the pillows out of the way temporarily. You can actually leave the bed made, which is nice. You can leave the sheets on and everything. So the way it is, the bed folds. 
So you kind of lift it up right here and then you just pull it forward and drop it down like that. We don't have sheets on the bed right now, but if you did, you could see that it's okay to leave the sheets on. But there you go, it's pretty easy. Now I'll come outside and close it up and show you how that goes. Okay, now that we moved the uh, mattress out of the way, you just do this, very easy very easy this guy goes like that and then this just drops on down nice and easy and then this lifts up that latches in right there latches in right here now this is the only part that you could consider maybe a little tricky and it might be easier with two people but the nice thing is you can do it with one person, as you can see, and you'll watch me, is that kind of goes in. The reason why it's nice to have a second person, just so this thing doesn't fall on your head, obviously, but you can kind of come right here and you got to kind of hold it up with your head a little bit. And with this hand, grab there, and this pulls, turns, and goes right there. And then you let this go down. And that latches, come around right here. This latches and the tire has these gas struts so it's assisted. And this just comes up here and you put this latch in and it's really light because of the gas assisted struts. And then it does have these extra security um, guys that you can screw in here to hold it. Honestly, that clip, if you were to put a cotter pin through it or a lock, I think that would hold this on, but you know, it's, it's better to be safe than sorry, I suppose. But there you go. Now it's all locked in. Now let's move up over to the actual tires and the rims and also the brakes. The brakes are a 12 inch electric drum brake. Uh, they're very heavy duty. You also have a uh, tire, it's a load range E, and it's a mud terrain tire. You have a, a 265-75, the rim is 16 inches. They're uh, aluminum rims. You also have the aluminum stems with little aluminum caps. We don't, we get a lot of trailers with the rubber ones. They're just not as reliable and can crack and dry rot over time. So that's nice that they do aluminum. And like I said, mud terrain tire, very robust tire. It's, it's heavy duty. It's rated for 34, 3,400 and some change, 34, 1,500 pounds, right? Single axle. So your combined rate, rate, weight is over 6,800 pounds. So the trailer, it's 4,800 pounds dry. So you have a lot of range in there to be able to load this trailer up and not go over your limit, your tires or your rims. And you might be like, why are you talking about this? You would be surprised how many manufacturers, they really push the limits on the tires and the rims. A lot of, I've seen manufacturers that don't put load range G's on trailers heavier than this. I've seen manufacturers putting load range C tires on a trailer that's a, almost a thousand pounds heavier than this trailer, which is absurd is because that's the worst thing you can do is have a blowout on a, on a trailer on a camping trip. That's not going to lead to a fun trip. So uh, there you have it. That's the tires and um, that's pretty much the trailer. Thank you so much for watching. Remember this video was brought to you by RVs of America or ROA Off-Road. If you have any questions, any comments, make them below. If there's something we missed or some details you wanna know about, you know, make them in the comments. We do read the comments. We'll even make a video for you if there's something you wanna see that you didn't see. Uh, this is not an operational video. We do have exclusive videos for our roamers. Uh, Roamer is somebody that buys a camper from ROA. That makes you, we, we, don't, can, we don't call the people that work with us customers, we call them roamers, right? You're, uh, I guess, a potential roamer if you buy a camper from us. Here at ROA, we don't believe in just selling campers. We believe in 
creating an experience that you don't get anywhere else. You know, we have a, an exclusive Roamer tech line. You know, when if you after you purchase your camper, you become a Roamer and you receive that Roamer exclusive Roamer tech line. If you have an issue, you're on the road, you can text it. We always have somebody on there, full-time job. You know, we have Roamer rallies, we have Roamer adventures. We're headed down to Baja actually next week. I'm super excited about that. Uh, in September, we do the annual Roamer rally and everybody all over the country comes. Most of the people that we work with are all over the country. You know, um, we have people that drive 2000 miles. We have people actually in Europe and all over the all over the world that, you know, have become part of the Roamer community. Here at ROA, we always say that with most places, your relationship ends after the transaction is complete. But here at ROA Off-Road, that's the beginning of our relationship and the beginning of our adventures because it's not about a transaction it's about an experience and the experience of your camper and your ownership lasts well it just starts after you buy it and it lasts as long as you own it and that's what we believe that's what we live by and if you go out and you ask roamers you ask people that work with us they'll tell you that we we love our people we love the people that work with us and just want to say thank you to all of those roamers out there and if you're interested and you want to know more about this camper please don't hesitate to give us a call at 801-860-0035 don't forget to of course subscribe like and have a wonderful day talk to you later bye bye